Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things faith, lifestyle, occasional vlog every now and then. I also have my podcast called The Walk on this channel as well. I kind of just throw it all together. But yeah, my name is Sam. I'm so happy that you're here. I am here to fulfill a request that I've gotten a couple times actually, which I think is really special. A lot of people have asked me, okay, I want to get into the Bible. I do want to start reading it often, but I have no idea where to start. And I think that that's so valid. So we are going to hop into that today. I'm going to give you my tips and tricks, things that worked for me. They may not work for everybody, but I'm just going to share my experience with you. Um, just how I got into it daily, how I got it into my routine, what made me actually look forward to it, where did I start in the Bible, how do you know what to read, etc, etc. So we're going to get into all of that today. Before we get started though, down below in the description I will have links for you to my Instagram, my TikTok if you want it. If you don't care, that's cool too, but that will all be down below. I will also have my main channel linked as well. I'm sure most of you know me from there, but if you don't, I also have an ASMR channel as well. So that will all be linked down below for you. But without further ado, we're just going to ramble and we're going to get started with the video. So the Bible's a pretty hefty book, right? There's 66 chapters in there. How the heck do you know where to start? Also, how do you understand it, right? Because some translations are very hard to understand. So the first thing, the first tip I'm going to give you is the easiest because it's free. It is the Bible app. This is not sponsored. Nothing in this video is sponsored. Literally nothing. Okay. Just putting that out there right now. But there is a free Bible app that you can get on your phone. Download it from the app store. I will put the icon of like what it looks like just so you know what to look out for. But it's a free Bible app. The whole Bible's there and pretty much any translation I'm assuming there are a lot of translations on there and what you can do and what I do every day is the app actually gives you the verse of the day every single day there is one verse for you to read there is also a video that goes along with it so someone will kind of come on your screen and will talk to you about that verse what it means maybe the history behind it and it's quick. It's a quick one, little one minute, two minute at most video. And then there's a little devotional, which is like a little paragraph or two, a little blurb that you can read about the verse as well. So that is free and it comes to your phone. I have it up on my lock screen and you can tell the app actually what time to notify you every day with that verse. So every day I get a notification on my phone at noon of what the verse of the day is. So it's a really cool way to just expose yourself to a verse or two. You get seven verses a week and they're not repetitive. I don't think I've seen one repeated so far. And it's just really, really cool. It's a great tool and the fact that it's free makes it even better. Now let's talk about translations. There are a lot of different opinions about this. I personally use the NLT, which is the New Living Translation. And a lot of people will say, you know, stick to the ones that are closest to the original translations because that's how you get the most like meaning out of it, the original meaning, which I totally understand. However, if you're sitting down and reading a Bible with a translation that you can't understand, then it's kind of like, what's the point in my personal opinion? So you can go online and look up a verse and you can compare a bunch of different translations. And I think you should just pick the one that you can understand the best. That's just my personal opinion. So I use the New Living Translation. There are no really huge fancy words or weird. It almost feels like you're reading Shakespeare sometimes with one of the really difficult translations. And you know, if you can read the difficult translations, cool. Maybe it just says more about me. I like the more simple words and I think for beginners that's a good place to start. So the NLT is what I use. I have two Bibles here. This one I've had for a while now and it's just your plain regular Bible. Nothing, nothing crazy. The last couple of months though, I did invest in another Bible, which is the same exact translation, but it's a little bit bigger, a little bit heftier because this one actually has space for you to write notes in the margins. And I think that's just really helpful for me because when I read a chapter, and I make notes as I read. When I'm done reading that chapter, I go back and I can like look at what notes I wrote down that stood out to me. So you see I have just little, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You just kind of jot down what stands out to you and it's a good way to be able to go back and read. Hello. Yeah, just kind of pick the Bible that feels right 
for you. It's going to be your Bible. You're going to be the one reading it. You know, you're going to get personal with this thing. So make sure it's one that you can understand and one that you like. And if they're aesthetically pleasing like this one, all the better. This one, if you're curious, is Hosanna Revival, I think. And then this one is just Amazon, believe it or not. It's linked in my storefront, so I'll put that down below for you. If you're like me and you like to be extra too, I would recommend getting like a pack of highlighters or something. I color coat mine, so like green is um, Bible study, blue is what I read at church, purple is what I read on my own time, etc., etc. It just makes it look pretty and it's just something to do as you're reading it. So it's kind of like an incentive for me. Personally, these are also Amazon also I believe on my storefront and lastly, I'm just kind of going over tools first I would recommend getting a devotional This is the one I use. It's called the word for you today um, Different churches give it out. So I'm covering I'm covering the name of a church here But the word for you today I've been reading it for many many years now because the church I grew up in also gave these out I believe you can order them online, but don't quote me, but just get a devotional I would like go on Amazon and type Christian devotional or Bible devotional for beginners or something like that and it gives you it's kind of like the verse of the day again So they are little paragraphs. So this is all you have to read every day little paragraph One verse that it's kind of surrounded or, or that it's pertaining to I guess I should say and a little blurb about it So you're getting into the word you're also learning a little something It makes you think about things in a different way than you normally would and between this and the verse of the day I think that's a really good place to start it kind of just takes the pressure off and you don't have to figure out what to read. How do you know if it's the right or the wrong thing to read? First of all, there's no wrong thing to read. But there is a lot of pressure when you're trying to figure it out on your own, right? So the fact that somebody is kind of just hand feeding it to you makes it so much easier. Now, as far as what to read on that similar note, a really cool trick I learned, I learned it a couple years ago, is with the book of Proverbs. So the book of Proverbs is the book of knowledge. It was written by King Solomon, it has 31 chapters, and it's essentially, it's literally giving you life advice on things to do, not to do, who to surround yourself with, who to not surround yourself with. It's really, really good. It's like a manual on how to live your life in a good and faithful way. And so there are 31 chapters, like I said, and so a trick is to read whatever proverb corresponds to that date that you're reading it. So for example, today is August 15th, I believe, I would read Proverbs 15. Tomorrow I would read Proverbs 16, etc, etc, etc. You don't have to start with the first of the month, you could if you want to, but whatever date it is right now, August whatever, September whatever, read that chapter of Proverbs and read it every day. I've been doing that for quite a while now, I would say almost a year, and yeah, I reread it every single month. So every month I reread Proverbs. And it's really cool because it then it sticks with you, it sticks in your brain, it's almost like you're memorizing it but you're not actually trying to, it just stays with you. And so if it's a month that has 30 days, then on the last day of that month I would read chapter 30 and 31. You can do that on your phone, the free Bible app, you can Google verses too and chapters and read them online, or you can use an actual Bible and just read that chapter. It's such a good tool, you're getting in the Word every day, and it's the book of wisdom, so you're actually learning a lot, and it just really makes you think. It's really cool, and it takes maybe five minutes, maybe? So I would recommend that as also a really good place to start, that little Proverbs trick. I would also recommend reading the Gospels kind of early on in your like beginner stage. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they are essentially recaps of Jesus's life, the miracles he did, the trials he went through, the temptations, and then all the way leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection, but they're told from four different perspectives, which is really cool. Um, I have read them all and I, I love them. If you've ever watched the show The Chosen, which is about Jesus and all, everything he did, it's essentially the Gospels brought to life. It's just so, it's just such a good way to learn about Jesus, who he was, his character, the things that he did, what he did for us, the love he had for us. Um, and they're easy to follow, they're not that long, and it's just a good way to know about Jesus. Because if you're reading the Bible, you want to know about God and you want to know about Jesus, right? So how else or what better way to learn than to read the Gospels. So there are four of them, and again, it is kind of the same story, but it's from different perspectives. So 
it's not redundant, if that makes sense. And some people have different opinions here, right? Some people will say, no, you have to start in Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible, and then read the whole Bible from beginning to end. And I understand why people would say that, right? Read it in kind of chronological order. But I will say my personal opinion, and I do know a lot of people that agree with me, the Old Testament is a lot harder to understand than the New Testament is. So I always recommend like read the Gospels, start like also read like James, read First and Second Peter, like read those books because they're easier to understand. You're getting to know Jesus because if you don't know who Jesus is, like personally, right? It's kind of hard to read the New Testament because it's like you don't know why you're reading it yet or who you're reading it for. Does that make sense? Um, I have read a decent amount of the New Testament. I'm sorry, the Old Testament, but definitely not all of it. And I have a hard time getting through some of it. I'm not even gonna lie to you. A lot of big words, a lot of names that I don't remember. And sometimes it's just really hard to follow. I'm just being, I'm just being honest. So I personally recommend reading the books of the New Testament first, just saying. On that note, there is another tool that I would really recommend. It is another free app that you can get on your phone. Again, not sponsored, but it's called Enduring Word. And so you can say you're reading the Bible and you get to a verse that you just don't understand or a chapter and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. You can go on this app, type in the actual like verse that you're reading exactly where you are in the Bible and it'll break it down for you sentence by sentence. What does this mean? Why are they saying it? What's the context? What's the history here? How does that pertain to the next verse? It breaks it down almost like reading the Bible for dummies. Like it's very thorough. And I think you can put what your actual translation is that you're reading as well in there. It's free. A influencer that I follow, her name is Janine Amapola. She's the one that recommended it to me. So I can't take credit. I didn't find it, but she recommended that in one of her videos. I downloaded it and I don't use it all the time, but when I have used it, I have seen how thorough and how helpful it is. So if you want something like reading the Bible for dummies, that would be a good option for you as well. And then lastly, I would just say, well, I am going to recommend like you also find a church, find a church that you really like, that you feel comfortable in, that you, you know, agree with their values and, you know, it just, you enjoy it, right? I, I am blessed to have been able to find a church like that, that I'm at currently. I've met so many amazing people and it's so different in a good way, like so much better to do life with people that are like-minded, that have the same beliefs, that will hold you accountable, that will answer questions for you if you have no idea what's going on. You're like, hey, what does this verse mean? Or what do I, you know, what do I, what do I do here? It's people to give you that good advice, to give you counsel, to be a good example, um, to find a mentor, you know, just people to do life with. It, I'm, I know it's scary. You're talking to somebody who went to church by herself every Sunday for months and months and months on end without talking to anybody. And then now I've come out the other side and I have such a great community at this church and I can't imagine my life without it. It is a game changer and it's so worth the couple months of being uncomfortable by yourself because when you come out the other end and you get involved and you just meet people, it's like night and day. So anyway, I would recommend finding a church and when you do go to a church, get a little notebook. Now, I actually don't bring this notebook to church. I know it's, it's not cute, it's not pretty. I've had this notebook for a year and a half now and I just actually finished it. It's filled with a bunch of notes, church notes, my own personal notes, prayers, all the things get something like this. And so what I do is every Sunday, I sit and I listen to my pastor talk and I write notes on my phone just because I type faster than I write. So I type every verse that my pastor says and then all of his comment commentary underneath or at least the commentary that stands out to me. And then the next day, every Monday, usually I sit down in the morning and I rewrite my notes that were on my phone in here and so that forces me to go through the verses again to go through his sermon again and like the lesson again and it makes me think a little more and it kind of just drives it into your memory more because it's just like being in school when you have to listen to your teacher give a lesson and it kind of goes in one ear and you like understand it in the moment and then it kind of goes out the other and you never think about it again in this way it kind of helps you to really drive the points home 
it commits them to memory a little bit more and it really just forces you to kind of like meditate in it not forces but it just gives you another opportunity to be in the word and again it's like kind of like you're being spoon fed you're not f having to find the verses on your own i think that's a really helpful tool and then the last thing i will say like once you read the gospels and then you know a lot of the new testament and proverbs and you're like okay now what i get it sometimes i i find myself being like all right i don't really know what to read now there's nothing wrong with just picking from the list and being like i haven't read this book yet so i'm gonna read that there's no wrong way to do it there's really no wrong way um or also if i hear somebody like on on tiktok or you know somebody in my real life comment on one of the books of the bible and it kind of like inspires me to be like okay that's what i'm gonna read next or like one of my friends loves first and second kings for example and he talks about it all the time so there was one point where i was like i don't know what to read now but i heard him talking about first and second kings and i was like all right you know it just kind of you kind of pull inspiration from from places there's no wrong way to do it you can also probably download free like read the bible in a year guides where it tells you what to read every day um so there's really no wrong way to do it guys but those are just some tools that i hope will be able to speak to you that helped you if you have any more questions i know i talked really fast or i spoke really fast in this video i do that sometimes especially when I'm really like excited and passionate, so sorry. Um, but I hope that this helped you. If you have any more questions, please leave them down below or you can DM me on Instagram or TikTok or wherever, probably Instagram more. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. So thank you guys so much for watching, for being here. I love that you guys are curious about this topic and I'll see you guys next time for, it'll probably be a vlog. So I'll see you guys next time in my next video. Bye guys.